at home. It's the sound of rain. A track called My Behavior. Greetings and salutations one and all. How you doing? Welcome to the Night Shift to DJ Kevin Stew. It's real talk. This is where we get on road, get on good. This is where we just get on, you know? Inviting you to call a friend, tell a friend, friends of your friends, friends of your enemies, enemies of your friends, and your enemies too, not leaving anybody out. Come on in, be a part of the festivities. Be a part of the expressions. Just be a part. I want to big up to those who are locked in right now. Those on tune in radio on the night shift to DJ Kevin Steele. Those locked in out on New Jersey. NIE Radio. Those on the Foundation Radio Network, ClintonLindsay.com. Those on PEMGTV.com. If you're locked in on Clubhouse, welcome. Those on Facebook Live, big ups to you. Yeah, I don't mind you. You're coming here with your bad behavior, you know. I don't mind you coming here with your good behavior. All I ask is that you have respect. I come with any behavior you want. Just have respect. Because you can behave bad, you know, and not have respect. And you can behave bad and have respect. You know, it's like uh, when you go through and you cuss out somebody, but nobody knows who you're cussing out. 
Not even the person that you're causing. Yeah, man, that is having some respect. So what you going on, bud, anyway, right? I want to say big ups to my sponsors. Thank you to Paul C Media Group. When being in the moment is priceless, let's give them a call. What can they do for you? Everything that you see here on KevinStew.com and so much more. Everybody already knows it's my name. So you have a church service, a funeral, a party, a graduation, a seminar. And even you want to stream live. Let's call them up and say hey. I want to have an event, an event coming up. What can you do for me? How can you help me out here? Kevin Stew said you can help. And they'll talk with you and they'll figure out what you need to make your event happen. Their number is 754-999-1140. That's 754-999-1140. I want to say thanks to Althea and her healing heavenly hands. Althea is a licensed massage therapist. That's Althea Isu. For those of you having difficulty with her name. Althea Isu is a licensed massage therapist operating out of Broad County, North Miami Dade and South Palm Beach counties. She comes to you, bringing her table, her oils and over 20 years massage therapy experience. Give her a call 954-655-9000 or email her at theolate at att.net That's 954-655-9000 Email T-H-E-A-L-A-T-E-R at att.net She only has one request outside of paying her It's called the Kevin Stew Clause Get off her table and go sleep somewhere else when she's done I want to say thanks to Reggae Global Entertainment. Reggae Global will act as your booking agent, handle your tour management, take care of your business registration, legal service referrals, music production, marketing and promotion, and so much more. Let's go ahead and link them up online at reggaeglobal.com. You'll find contact phone number, you'll find email. You'll see a list of their services. And when you contact them, say you heard about them on the night shift with DJ Kevin Steele. Thank you to McNeil Trucking. With McNeil Trucking, your goods are in good hands. Go ahead and get him a call, 954-406-9740. You want to move from here to go there? Not quite sure how to work out logistics? Get him a call, 954-406-9740. Tell them Kevin Stew sent you. If anybody else realize what I just see. Ah oh boy, you know this is one of these one of these days when you can all you can say is woosa. It's a woosa moment like right now. Everybody 
The sound of rain in the background. The track called My Behavior. Watch out, watch out, watch out. Y'all see what's going on now? Yeah, it's real talk night. It's not community and finance night. Those on Facebook Live, those on, on, on Clubhouse, don't get too comfortable. It's only a segment broadcast. Yeah, it'll be over before you know it. Once again, invite you to call a friend, tell a friend, friends of your friends, friends of your enemies, enemies of your friends, and your enemies to call everybody. We're not leaving out anybody. And every goodie. Yeah, man, the information is here for everyone, and, and the opportunity is here for everyone to share uh, with their take on the information. So one of the things that I want to know from you guys This whole idea of defending one's honor How you how you feel about it? You know, is it something that um, Is gone with days of old? Is, something, is it something that is still relevant today? You know, I have to ask because when, when you take into consideration things like what happened over the weekend, you know, you, you, you really have to ask, all right, is this something relevant to today? Is this something that we should be doing, you know, uh, on a regular basis where someone says something that y your partner doesn't like? you step up and you take off your glove and you slap them in the face and you challenge them to a duel and then you meet in the square at high noon well at three minutes to noon take your steps let the clock count down and then when the chime goes off you turn and draw are we still at that point of our development or do we now get to a point where we say, hey, you know, it's, it's not quite like that. And let's work this out. I don't like what you said. My partner doesn't like what you said. I'm fine with what you said. Whichever way you work it out. Because I hadn't, with the exception of uh, a group, two groups, one group, that I'm in on one social media platform and someone that I responded to. I haven't really given my my take on the whole debacle. <laughs> I don't know what else to call it. The whole uh, scene. All right. Let's let's start here. This is a group of actors gathered in one location to honor actors right so anything that happens as this event is going on chances are it could be scripted and when you take into consideration something like that how then do you accept anything that you see happening on that screen, on that stage, as something that isn't staged. Now let's take for example, or not for example, let's, let's assume that this was not scripted, this was not a part of the show, it just happened. Did it happen and one was prompted to react to what was said? Because the joke was made. Everybody was laughing except one person. The person who the joke was on. And even her husband was laughing until apparently he got the look saw the look 
I, I don't know. I said to, to, to a friend of mine, um, they made a comment on social media and I said to them, are you saying that he forgot his cue like some actors do? <laughs> and they said, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that, but it could be possible. And I just left it there. Because going back to the fact that it's a bunch of actors and really good actors also, you're talking about people at the top of their games, which is why you're being honored, right? So here it is, this event, this this comment was made and everybody knows about it. I, I, I don't need to state what the event is or who the players were. Everybody knows who I'm talking about and what I'm talking about. And so the joke was made. First thing, it's a comedian that made the joke. What do comedians do? They make jokes. If you've been to a comedy show, if you've heard of a comedy show, if you've watched a comedy show, you will know that especially people who sit at the front, they get picked on. doesn't really matter who you are. If they know you from down back in the day or they just met you outside or they don't know you at all. You run the risk of getting picked on for any number of things. Random things. So does this now mean that comedians can't do comedy? Because this is a part of comedy. So does it mean that comedians can't do comedy? Okay now people are sensitive cool so shouldn't comedians what 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 then should comedians do comedy about because if she, if if she's going to be sensitive about this joke that was made then she should be the one to react someone made a, a comment on social media and said you know I can understand now why there are so many problems in marriages because women have to be defending themselves. And I, I, I responded in saying, well, why should I be going to fight with someone because my partner's feelings were hurt by something that was said? And they were like, what do you mean? It is, I said, I am equipped to work with my partner on whatever issue they are having, why they were affected by something that someone said. Why should I be going to fight everybody that says something that offends my partner when I can work with just my partner on dealing with that issue? Because clearly it's an issue with my partner why there's some kind of tension so okay my partner let's go ahead let's talk through this let's let's see why it is that you're feeling the way you're feeling no but people don't do that no people are saying go ahead go forth and fight for my honor for what really so that you can feel better okay so i go and defend your honor and i end up dead then what happens you're you are still hurt not only are you hurt that this person offended you, but now you get to be hurt that you have lost your loved one. Your partner is now gone because they went to defend your honor and, and fell short. One of the other things about this past weekend is, and I, I heard someone made, make a statement. If it were someone else on that stage, someone bigger in stature, someone who could possibly throw hands or throw bodies, that move would not have been made to go up on stage and lay hands. That would not happen. And in our culture, well, we 
tend to pick on the weakest individual. So if you're going to defend honor, you need to be defending honor right across the board. Here it is, a few, what was that, two years ago? Whenever it was, when there was the whole entanglement issue, nobody got slapped. So nobody got slapped for infidelity when they could have been slapped for infidelity, but somebody gets slapped for a joke? Help me make that make sense. Please, somebody, anybody. 773-789 Stew. 773-789-7839. Call, text, WhatsApp, Telegram. They all work. The lines are open. I'm 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 here. Ready for your calls, ready for your views, ready for anything that you have to say. Um Big ups to G. Cole, my brethren, my colleague in, in, in media here in South Florida. Uh he put the question out there to some people and he, he, he said you know he finds that it is the single ladies that are saying that they have no problem with the honor being defended and the slap being laid and all I'm asking is why because if anybody knows me you know that there's a why and I want to know the why for each individual because the why for each individual is different. It's not a it's not a one size fits all kind of a why. So, but here is my take, of course. And I I have information here, but I have to go on my little bit of a rant. So, this individual is dealing with something. So, a medical condition. All of these people or the majority of these individuals that are known and in the business for a long time have some type of relationship. They play golf together, they shoot hoops together, they go on vacations together, they do whatever together. So they're friends. Whichever way you want to define the word, they're friends. And you want to tell me that Friends don't make fun of friends. All my life, I have been making fun of my friends and my friends have been making fun of me. And we're still friends. Because it's a part of what we do. So, if I get famous, I can't make fun of my friends anymore. How that work? Now, coming back to the, 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 the working on the issues. Here it is, someone is offended. Now, God forbid my partner be offended by something someone says to her. It's going to be a case, if she expects me to go throw hands and, and defend her honor, um, I'm sorry. Not happening. Let's go ahead and break up now. Hey, Francine. How you doing? It's been a minute. We, 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 you know. I know you have an opinion on this thing, you know. 773-789-STU. 773-789-7839. Francine, I know you have an opinion on this. I didn't check your social media platform to hear what you have to say about it. Um, <laughs> talk to me. So, here I am. Um, if, if my partner expects me to go out and, and throw hands because she feels slighted by what someone said to her well it's it's the end of us because i'm coming to you and we're going to talk about why you're offended by what was said prior to prior to i would say 2019 i'd be on the side of wanting to draw off a big stone, get a two by four, you know, find something, fling some stone, draw some fists, you know, whatever. But then I started on a journey to discovering self. And on that journey, I learned some things. Some things like the four agreements, one of which says 
um, don't take anything personal. And it sounds far-fetched, you know. What do you mean, don't take anything personal? You know, somebody says something to offend me. I must take it personal because they're talking about me. They, 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 them diss me. So I must just take that. So, well, okay. Somebody made fun of you. Someone that doesn't know you or someone that does know you. doesn't really matter. They made fun of you. They're using words. Now, one of the things with me when I was growing up was people talking about my nose being big. Now, as a child, there were times that I was offended by this. But then, for lack of wealth, <laughs> I could not go to a plastic surgeon and do anything about it. And then I realized, you know, but God created you just like this. So, if this is the way that the creator made me, then I'm perfectly made, right? Because we're taught that we're made in the image of the creator. So, why then do I need to change any of my appearances, any of my features? I'm fine just the way I am. So, if somebody is making fun of me because of something they see on me, and this is in my adulthood now I have come to this point this type of realization is because them grudge me whatever it is that you see on me that i am comfortable with if you are making fun of it then probably you are the one that have a problem with it i don't and if i am making fun of it then that is my thing to deal with so it's really much ado about nothing so here it is the honor of a woman is being defended by her spouse because another man has said something about her which she doesn't like and that results in someone laying their hand on the person of the person on the person that said it violation of personal space not only that, I don't know if anybody else realized this, but the things that happen in the news when it comes to celebrities, they all seem to be people of color. All the little scandals that are happening all over the place, you know, the, 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 the wardrobe, wardrobe malfunctions and the cheating scandals and the car crash and the... You know, people of color. So, are we always going to be the the monkeys on show? Uh, uh, and if anybody is offended by that, go ahead and be offended. I never call anybody a monkey. So, I'm not even going to take that back. But why must we always be the ones on show, the ones on display? Or hasn't anybody else noticed that? Is it just me? So, here we are looking at this thing that has prompted me to address this issue of defending honor tonight. And according to um, cultural psychology, social psychology, psychology on a whole, there is a whole culture of honor and I, I went and, and found this bit of information which I will present to you in just a few moments because we're gonna take a break yeah the first segment has run off already partly because some craziness was happening with my titles but in part because I had to go on this little rant I had to get that out there, share my views on the whole show that was put on over the weekend. Because that's exactly what it was. It was a show. And if it wasn't a show, then people have some issues that they need to work on. She has the issue 
dealing with self. Here you have a medical condition. There's nothing that you can do about it. It's a medical condition. Unless you have a treatment for it, go get treated outside of that. You're living with it. And that's another issue I have too, because we, as a, as a, as a people, we tend to have issues with stating the facts. How many times have, have we gone through and heard family members say, but you know, I didn't know that they were going through this. I didn't know that this was a that, that the doctor had said this and they only had this much time to live because they're keeping secrets. Why are they keeping secrets? For what? You have an ailment and this ailment may or may not take you out. So if it's an ailment that is going to, it's, it's a terminal illness, why are you keeping it secret? Because you don't want people to know, you don't want people to be, you know, coming to talk to you about it all the time. Then say you don't want to talk about it. But you don't need to keep it a secret. For what? It is what it is. So here it is. She has this condition, a medical condition. And the joke is made about her because she has done to, something to alter her appearance because of this condition. Big whoop. Then people say, some friends of mine, people I respect dearly and love dearly, some of them say, you know, you don't make fun of people with a medical condition. But people made we, some, some of the biggest jokes that, that we have had in our lifetime had to do with people with medical conditions, people with, 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 with um, handicaps, uh, whether it be physical handicaps or, or speech impediments. One of the, the biggest Jamaican jokes is that Jamaican parents have a way of disciplining their children the ones that use the strap and they would beat the syllables some of them and if you if you had a parent that stuttered you're in trouble because that one syllable is is, is going to have issues coming out because they stutter and this was one of the biggest jokes for the longest while and probably still is so people that have speech impediments should be offended by this just this morning i i heard on the radio where there's a little skit going on comedian morning show there's a skit going on and they're pretending to be chinese don't know a lick of chinese the probably only thing they know in chinese is wonton soup here they are having a whole dialogue in this made-up Chinese language. Should all the Chinese be offended by this? And if not, then why should this woman be offended because someone made a joke about her? And why should this man defending her honor go and lay hands on someone else? Not even in private, but for the whole world to see that was watching and for everybody to talk about it since why if not for the sake of publicity then what this is real talk on the night shift to dj kevin stew we're gonna take a quick little break when we come back we say sayonara to those on facebook live um there are some comments here uh all right, Garrity, that's a bridge, enough love. All right, so um, Matt, how you been? Don't forget, she said she don't care what no one had to say before this, and then she gonna react that way even after being introduced jokingly as her man in regards to her, as a man in regards to her bald head. <laughs> Um, yeah, Matt, yeah. Uh, in primary school, our choir teacher said, if someone messes up, keep playing and not bring attention to the problem. Now, I never know she has alopecia until tonight. See? That's just it. They kept on going. Is it a big deal? Well, I, I can tell you this, Garrity, I can tell you this. She herself had come out on, on, on 
whichever magazine, whichever social media, whichever platform, she had put it out there that she's shaving her head as a result of having alopecia. So she had put it out there. But that is not even where I rest. My main thing is, if you have issues with someone saying something about you, why do you have these issues? What type of insecurity is it that you have so? You are a multi-millionaire and a, an international movie star. And you're going to have issues with someone making a joke about you. Not just someone, but your own colleague and friend. Seriously? To the point where you're prompting your partner. Okay. Maybe that's an assumption. But like it or not whether it was an intentional prompt or an unintentional prompt he was prompted to act because she was offended and so here it is he went and took action as a result of her reaction so she he is prompted know what that mean what has it come to where does it end? What is going to be the end result? Come on over to kevinstew.com. We're going to continue the discussion and look into this whole idea of defending honor and the culture behind it. This is Real Talk on the night of the DJ Kevin Stew. 773-789 Stew gets you in touch. 773-789-7839. Please call, text, WhatsApp, Telegram, any one of them that you choose to use. If you're overseas and you can't call me directly, WhatsApp will get through it with international calls 773 789 7839 easy way to remember it 773 789 stew easy 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 those of you watching there it is on the bottom of your screen 773 789 stew we're gonna part company with those on facebook live those on clubhouse come on over to kevinstew.com for the remainder of the broadcast we're gonna take a quick break see you in just a few <laughs> Pulsey Media Group, innovative streaming and recording, has done it again. A new way to get your business in full view of your neighborhood consumer through AdShare TV. It's available in your neighborhood today. It's easy. Just call us. 754-999-6020. Become a host today and place a TV monitor in a strategic location so it's easy to see. Get a one-minute video ad or longer that plays anywhere in our network. Can't be a host? No problem. For a few dollars, we'll run your 30 second video ad. A host can run announcement specials like buy one get one free or discount ads. Let's turn your flyers into a 30 second video with music or a voiceover or let us create and run your video ad with a spokesperson. Take advantage of our early enrollment discount. Join us today. Your ad will be seen at least 30 times per day in your AdShare TV neighborhood. It's easy. Just call us. 754-999-6020. Add Sheer TV, part of Pulsing Media Group. Coming up this Saturday, April 2nd, 2022, at, eight, at 627 South Andrews Avenue, it's Eats 876 in association with GMAC Music presenting the grand opening of Eats 876, the Rhythms of the Heart edition of the grand opening featuring Neri performing live with DJ Kevin Stew and DJ Kelly Flavor providing music for the evening. Admission, buy out the bar, buy out the kitchen. This is the grand opening of Eats 876 downtown Fort Lauderdale at 8 p.m. Eastern. Doors open. This is April 2nd, 2022. Don't miss it. You want, you've got to be there. And remember, March Madness continues. MaryKay.com forward slash Kevin Stew. You can get on and order your set of satin hands. Get the satin hand set. Restore that tender touch. 
to your hands and you get 50% off with the pink clay mask. So get your set in hand set set today. And uh, March ends on the 31st. Today is the 30th. Go ahead, get your set in hand set and get 50% off pink clay mask. Go to marykay.com forward slash Kevin Stew or go to kevinstew.com and click on the ad you see right there the mary Kay ad you see on the front page it takes you to the site you can go order place your order all right catch this before it runs out come on smile oh honey he's still not smiling maybe he's not a smiler yeah maybe he's just not a happy baby maybe he's just being a boy or maybe he's teething maybe it's just a phase maybe he has autism, and we can definitely do something to help. Maybe is all you need to find out more about autism. No big, joyful smiles by six months is one early sign. Learn the others at AutismSpeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. Reggae Global Entertainment presents the brand new self-titled album from Yishka with nine great songs. Oh, baby, let me love you. Be grateful for life. Be grateful for life. Shake you down. Yeah, girl, I wanna shake what you down. What else can I do? What else can I do? Babe, come over. Baby, come over. My, my, my. my, 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 my. It's, our time. it's our time. You know I love you. For your love. For your love. I I'm falling. I'm Yishka, nine great songs available on all streaming platforms. Available now. Hey, I'm representing for DJ Kevin Stew, working on the night shift, in the night shift radio show. Won't go changing like the weather Just to please the devil never Will DJ Kevin's true sell his soul That's a word and honor It's Christine to represent him Word and honor Celestia DJ Kevin's true Them say the what man keeps on won So if a man won't fight you Run! Not turn up Hear me now Dance up back a man a tuck it on you, you just Dance up back if him a run up him more just Dance up back and him a go like him but you just Dance up back, dance up back cause a Mickey Mouse that A Mickey Mouse that and him a dear me dear Like a hit at a fool in competent But him is a non big and big and scrupulous rat When you tell him all of that and him a chat and you do Dance up back up while him a chat no answer him back Mouth cut grass, face and mouth make me chat As long as I know that if he knock you back no pay him, no mine, I do not react Cause he might a chat and you go react No one back on my shit and land him to chop It's half time dead now, you a go think back and say If me did know me, how no chop him so At them the time they do shop, they get the gun Lock up for your goose, I go cook in a day in a mail pot Oops, you gonna prison as easy as that I say if me did know me, how da Dance so back on man, I took it on you, you just Dance so back if him a run up him See the knife here, kill fatty man And if you go and like your body, you are gonna make fatty one Me say, wait, you want dead? And that's when me drag on And keep it two cheer and shoe back up your man And dip in on my pocket like a dang gag And back out a pack of cigarettes and say, boss, you want Dance so back a man a chunk it man, you, you just Dance so back if him a run up him mouth just Dance so back and him a go and like him, but you just Dance so, dance so back as a Mickey Mouse dad We have a dispute, me and me girlfriend When she come in last I said, 
come, no come, no you know from when I want back you up to go to your them. Me not go make you butter butter me again. Me rather go a prison car, woman no end. She left out of the yard, me don't even know when. When she come back, she a ball, me say what to your grand. I feel up her face and her two jaw them. I see a bed of box, me round a cat burn pen. Me say wait, a man box my girlfriend. I must sit dead in one dead like auntie for them. Me put up on her red, I say no worry. Vice, yeah, me box a girlfriend When me turn round, the man a ten foot ten Me go for run, but something hold me foot them Me say respect me friend, I know him box again She say yes I him grief, me say alright then If you think so you bad boy, box her again Boy, the brother box her again Me say wait, me never see you want box her again Boy, the brother box her again Me just run the cross the road and buy a combat Me give my shaky man, them I say respect your boss to save me the problem I don't think I'll be bad about so I don't have to stand so back I'm gonna talk it man you you just stand so back if him a run up in Zone of Professor Notes I want to say what? Tan so back You're gonna prison as easy as that I said if me didn't know me would So you know this this song is by no stretch of the imagination a new song there's nothing new about it it has been around for a very long time and um I want to say yo oh, just, just chill Tan so back easy because things happen you know uh, people people uh, do things and get into situations so it's all about how you deal with that situation after it happens right so here it is you're going to deal with a situation and end up being dealt with yourself come on now you need to be smart with the thing so the whole idea the whole thing about defending honor where did this come from you know how how when did this start is it something new no it's nothing new it's something that has has carried over into this new age right into this new day and so we're just going about things um a little bit differently and <laughs> uh ridiculously at times i guess um i don't even know what to call this i'm i'm there was something that i was supposed to get ready for like a while now and i'm i'm just going about getting it ready but anyway so let's let's look at the culture of honor right those of you just joining in, welcome to the broadcast. The, the phone line is open, 773-789-STU, 773-789-7839. Much respect to my affiliates. Um, we have NIE Radio to New Jersey, Big Up Motivator. Much love to you. You can catch the Motivator on Thursdays and Saturdays. On Thursdays, Double Trouble Thursday from 9 p.m. And on Saturdays from uh, 3 p.m., from 1 p.m., he is on the air you can you can check him out the motivator um motivation saturdays or the saturday broadcast we go to clintonlindsay.com the foundation reader network mr lindsay is on air at 12 noon eastern every day monday through friday and you can get a special treat on sundays when he goes throwback <laughs> and gets into his element and just has some fun on reggae global radio much love to those on PEMGTV.com. Much love to you. Those who are tuning on TuneIn Radio, those on Zeno FM. Big ups, big ups, big ups. Enough love. All right. So we're talking about defending honor. Now, a culture of honor is a culture in which a person, usually a man, feels obligated to protect his or her reputation by answering insults, affronts, and threats, oftentimes through the use of violence. Cultures of honor have been independently invented many times across the world. Three well-known examples of culture of honor include the cultures of honor in parts of the Middle East, the Southern United States, and inner city neighborhoods of the United States and elsewhere that are controlled by gangs. 
Cultures of honor can vary in many ways. Some stress female chastity to an extreme degree, whereas others do not. Some have strong norms for hospitality and politeness towards strangers, whereas others actively encourage aggression against outsiders. What all cultures of honor share, however, is the central importance placed on insult and threat and the necessity of responding to them with violence or threat of violence, as we saw on the weekend. Insults and threats take on great meanings in culture of on cultures of honor because of the environments in which cultures of honor develop. Now, such cultures develop in lawlessness environment, sorry, in lawless environments where there is no central authority that can offer effective protection to its citizens. Hmm. In such a situation, a person has to let it be known that he will protect himself, his family, and his property. Insults and affronts are important because they act as probes, establishing who can do what to whom. A person who responds with violence over small matters, for example an insult or an argument over a small amount of money, can effectively establish himself as one who is not to be messed with on larger matters. Thus, an effective response to an insult can deter future attacks when the stakes get much higher. Many violent incidents in cultures of honor center on what might be considered a trivial incident to outsiders. Like, you mean something like getting slapped on public television? Such matters are not trivial to the people in the argument, however, because people are defending or establishing their reputations. What is really at stake is something of far greater importance than a one dollar bet owed a one dollar debt sorry owed on a record on the jukebox. In cultures of honor, reputation is highly tied up with masculinity. A telling anecdote from Hodding Carter's book Southern Legacy in back in nineteen fifty concerned a 1930s, 1930s Louisiana court case in which Carter served as a juror. The facts of the matter were clear. The defendant lived near a gas station and had been pestered for some time by workers there. One day the man had had enough and opened fire on the workers, killing one person and wounding two others. As Carter tells it, the case seemed open and shut. And so Carter began discussions in the jury room by offering up the obvious, to him, verdict of guilty. The other 11 jurors had very different ideas about the obvious verdict, however, and they seemed they strongly and unanimously favored acquittal. Now fellow jurors explained to Carter that the man couldn't be guilty. What kind of man would he would have shot the what kind of man wouldn't have shot the others. An elder juror later told Carter that a man cannot be jailed for standing up for his rights. In cultures of honor everywhere, traditional masculinity is a virtue that has to be defended. So it's a, cult it's a, it's a culture of honor thing. It, 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 it shows your masculinity, right? So you whomever it is that will stand up to someone that is going to say something about them is the bigger man because you have dishonored my name you have dishonored me you have dishonored my spouse so i am the bigger man for beating you down really you realize how archaic that sounds or am i the only one that sees it that way maybe i'm the one that that, that is young and dumb then various ethnographies have described cultures of honor in great detail in great detail sociologist elijah anderson for example has written about the culture of honor in inner cities of the united states anthropologists julian pitt rivers and jg per perstiani have written about honor in the mediterranean region and an important collection of papers can be found in uh, Peristiani's 1966 book, Honor and Shame. 
the values of Mediterranean society. Notably, the book includes chapters by Pitt Rivers, Peristiani, and Pierre Bordeaux, who has written about honor and the importance of female chastity among the Kabyle, Kabyle of Algeria. As in many Mediterranean cultures, the sanctity of the female name among the Kabyle depends on a great deal on the purity of this woman and how well the men guard and protect it. In such cultures, females who disgrace a family may be killed by their male relatives in an attempt to cleanse the family name. So, you violate and a family member will take you out. But that's their culture. Within experimental so social psychology, Richard Nisbeth and Dove Cohen's 1996 book Culture and Honor lays out the case that there is a there is a culture of honor among whites in the contemporary south of the United States. Among other evidence, they show that the homicide rate is higher among whites in the United in, in the US South, but only for killings that involves quarrels lovers triangles and other arguments that is those killings were honor where honor is most likely to be at stake so that's the one where you have dishonored my wife and you must die because it's the honorable thing to do so you die a martyr for defending your wife's honor because your gun is not as big as the next man gun that dif dishonored your wife <laughs> right you die a martyr what we don't look at that part of it we we'll only see the part where the person who is standing up for the one that was dishonored comes out the victor no they don't always do so when they fall short and end up dead how that go they also show in, in opinion surveys that white southerners are more likely to endorse violence than are northerners when the violence is used in response to, to insult or in response to some threat to home, family or property. So the northerners are the more, um, what should I say, the more evolved ones? In lab studies, they showed that Southern U.S. college students were more likely than Northern, U Northern college students to respond in a, an aggressive manner when they were insulted. The insult involved an experimental confederate who bumped into the experimental participant as he was walking down the hallway and then called the participant an expletive. Expletiv. Southern students were more than twice as likely as Northern students to become visibly angry at the insult. 85% to 35%. They were more cognitively primed for aggression, completing scenarios with more violent endings, and they showed surges in their levels of testosterone, which is a hormone associated with aggression, competition, and dominance, and cortisol, and a hormone associated with stress and arousal. After the bump, um, these levels were much higher. Additionally, Southerners who became more aggressive as they subsequently as they subsequently walked down the hallway and encountered another experimental confederate who was six feet three inches tall and weighed two hundred and fifty pounds. <laughs> Finally, the researchers also show that the laws and social policies of the South were more lenient toward violence than those of the North. This is important because social policies may be one, of one way the culture of honor is carried forward. Even after originating conditions, the lawless environment of the frontier South have largely disappeared. So, for me... This even goes further than just the, the fact that people in the South tend to have shorter fuses. For me, it has something more to do with people in the South of the United States are people more associated with slavery. So you're talking about gangs and college students, you're talking about mostly black people. Okay, so the college students, maybe not the black people, but more white people. But gangs you definitely black people and 
as as they're looking at cultures and the south i am really thinking a lot of people of color involved in these studies and being ones with short fuses now why wouldn't people of color have short fuses when they have been through to been through so much why not so we were oppressed for most of our of our western lives as in the european um, american lives not our african lives not so much our african lives not to say that there wasn't slavery ha happening in africa on the continent there was slavery there too but here the slavery that we as we know it from history books and from plantations and 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 looking into the history of slavery and and the evolution of individuals and cultures of course there's going to be more aggression because people escaped from the south to go to the north to get away from slavery so it must have been a calmer place in the north and as a result of the culture the the community being a calmer community a more inviting a more um passive community you would expect that things would trigger them a whole lot less so here we are in the south and be someone bumped into you and called you an expletive and you're ready to fight because it's in our nature so you can't just do a study like this and put it out there and just say well you know this is how it is in the north versus how it is in the south and just leave it like that in a vacuum no because there's more to it why would people in the south be more aggressive because that was where slavery was so they're going to be more aggressive now when it comes to honor um <laughs> when you get out of when slavery is abolished and someone is still going to call you, refer to you as slave treat you like property disrespect you as as and and treat you like less than a, a, a man less than human why why shouldn't you be offended by it you're being oppressed why shouldn't you be offended now how do you defend that becomes the issue do you take a position where you're going to reason with someone so that they recognize your intelligence are you going to leave them to their ignorance so that they believe whatever they want to believe because they have not touched you all they have done was say something so now the question is how evolved are you emotionally how developed are you uh, with a sense of self and awareness and to, to be at a place where you can say well you know sticks and stones will break my bones but words will never hurt me as a child you would you'd say that when someone would say something about you right as a as a kind of a force field as a kind of a, a snapback but until that actually means something to you it's nothing it's just wind when you get to the point where you can say words will never hurt me and that means something when you can 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 lay your your hand on your heart and say words will never hurt me swear to it that changes the whole game because all people have to use against you are words now in a case of cultures where they say um a woman cannot do certain things because it defiles the, the family or a man should not do certain things because their actions will defile the family and there's a course of action to be taken well i cannot speak for those cultures i have never lived in it i know of it i've heard stories of it and um I actually have one bit of information here which speaks to it um, honor killings and so what we're gonna do right now is take a quick little break and when we come back we're gonna address that honor killings because it speaks to this whole honor thing and defending honor so we're gonna take a quick little break call up some people 
friends of your friends, call your friends, friends of your friends, friends of your enemies, enemies of your friends, and your enemies too. You don't really have to call them, you know, because they might be a, your enemy might be a friend of one of your friends. <sighs> You never can tell. You don't know. Just go ahead and share it because you're watching your page anyway, your social media platforms, your social media pages. So go ahead and share it out to them anyway. Call everybody, tell everybody. It is Real Talk on the Night Shift with DJ Kevin Stew. We'll be back after these few messages. Um, in fact, there's a particular thing I want to play right now for the first commercial break. All right, here we go. We'll be right back. Today in school, I learned a lot. In chemistry, I learned that no one likes me. In English, I learned that I'm disgusting. And in physics, I learned that I'm a loser. Today in school, in math, I learned that I'm ugly and I useless. Trash. And in gym, in biology, I learned that I'm pathetic I learned that I'm fat and a joke. And stupid. In history, Today in I learned school, that I'm trapped. Today in school, I learned that I have no friends. In English, I learned that I make people sick. And at lunch, I learned that I sit on my own because I smell. In chemistry, I learned that no one In biology, I learned that I'm fat and stupid. And in math, I learned that I'm trash. The only thing I didn't learn in school today... The only thing I didn't learn today... The only thing I didn't learn... Is why no one ever helps. Kids witness bullying every day. They want to help, but they don't know how. Teach them how to stop bullying and be more than a bystander at stopbullying.gov. A message from the Ad Council. Matthew 28, 19 says, Go ye therefore and teach all nations. With this in mind and encouragement received during a South Florida media conference, The Church Links was birthed. The Church Links is an interdenominational worship service portal for churches providing the tools to spread the word through technology in a cost-effective way. The Church Links www.dahchurchlinx.com Your links to worship and praise. Making great music is one thing, sharing it with the world, that's another. Let the professionals at Reggae Global Entertainment help you to another level. Specializing in artist management, booking, public relations and marketing, and promotion. Reggae Global Entertainment can help you with event planning, websites, photography, and video production, press releases, legal services, and graphic design. They can even help you with music production, so you can get the sound that you want every time. Call Reggae Global Entertainment at 954-804-8199. That's 804-8199. Or visit them online at reggaeglobalentertainment.com. Hey, yo, this is Caramante letting you know that right about now you are logged on to DJ Kevin Stew on the night shift. Don't move. I will never leave you alone Sometimes I just forget Say things I might regret It breaks my heart to see you cry yeah. I don't wanna lose you I could never make it alone
Welcome back to the broadcast. The sound of Fiji in the background his, with his rendition of the glory of love. Welcome back to the broadcast. Welcome back to Real Talk right here on the night shift to DJ Kevin Steele. As we address defending honor. So, according to psychology today, the subject of honor killings has made headlines in the within the last decade and it it as it does from time to time in the western world and back in when was this 2016 there was the death of Kwandil Balok um a beautiful young woman in Pakistan who defiled she defied social customs by having a voice and displaying her face in public. She did so largely through a social media presence that is fairly normal and unremarkable in many countries, but is almost unheard of in her country. She was apparently killed by her brother for dishonoring her family by posting revealing pictures of herself online. Her brother is unremorseful and unrepentant, believing, as so many, honor, um, so many honor killers do, that his actions were both necessary and justified. Now, it is possible to say, it is impossible, sorry, to say how many such murders occur around the world, as a majority of such cases are likely to be kept hidden from public view. From Indonesia to Egypt, where women are killed for running away with someone they love who has not been approved by their families, or for simply going out in public without a male chaperone. In less extreme cases, they might be burnt with acid or uncovering their face in public. Uh, sorry, for uncovering their face in public. Or they might be gang raped in revenge for crimes of a family member. And these are things that they do in that culture. One reason the cultural practice of honor killings or honor based violence more broadly is so remarkable is that it runs counter to the human instinct to preserve the lives of, of family members. Or less clinically, it contradicts the intrinsic love of a parent for a child, the, pro the protective affection of a brother for a sister. Evolutionary theorists a generation ago explained that the principle of inclusive fitness means that an organism's fitness is not limited to just its own reproductive pr success, but extends to that of its genetic relatives, especially its siblings and offspring. And this is offspring with whom it shares the most genetic material. This principle was said to help explain why an organism might exhibit self-sacrificing behaviors for its close kin under certain circumstances. But this principle also seems clearly contradictory to the practice of honor killings. What could harm an organism's fitness more than killing its offspring? The very currency of natural selection cultural beliefs and values seem to have an amazing power capable of overriding the most visceral urges of human nature can you imagine what society thinks is going to override that connection you have with your own offspring with your own sibling just because of what society says 
So, although there is a belief that culture is powerful, one can also think that this seemingly contradiction between culture and human nature is more apparent than real. In fact, simply marveling at the paradox might keep us from understanding why honor killings occur, perpetuating our Western in ignorance and getting in the way of our coming up with helpful solutions to a practice that most of us actually abhor. abhor. Um, to understand why honor killings occur, we need to appreciate the importance of reputation in societies known as honor societies. In an honor culture, reputation management is perhaps the most important social ethnic, sorry, social ethic there is, superseding all other values. Men in honor cultures are encouraged to seek reputations for being tough and intolerant of disrespect. Whereas women are encouraged to seek reputations for being loyal to family and sexually chaste. chaste. If, if, if someone insults your honor, you must respond, typically in an aggressive or even violent manner. Or you risk incurring the stain of dishonor. And dishonor remains like blood on white linen. It doesn't come out easily and might never be completely removed. This is why being dishonored in an honor culture is often considered a fate worse than death. To make matters worse, an individual's honor is intimately connected with his or her family members as well as with the broader community. As a consequence, the dishonor of one person can stain many others. This is what drives people in such cultures to engage in honor killings. Thus, in honor-oriented cultures, an honorable reputation defined locally, not by strangers in other countries, is seen as vital to success. And to an extent, it is. Honor cultures develop and persist in places characterized by economic vulnerability and the absence of the rule of law. In lawless societies, people do not believe that law enforcement, if it exists at all, can be counted on to protect them from exploitation and assault. The result of this disbelief, coupled with a, a sense of economic vulnerability, is that people put enormous stock in their reputations to protect them from social predation, making sure that people know you as someone who is not to be trifled with is a, is a way to reduce chances that anyone will try to exploit you to or to take what is yours. To lose your honor is to lose this protective shield without which you are naked in a world of thorns and thistles. Having honor, in contrast, confers social status, which can yield economic and social opportunities, including access to high quality mates. Without honor, a man or woman in an honor culture is likely to be socially ostracized, economically limited, and unable to procure a mate. So, I guess the question at this point is, what kind of society is it that we live in? Those of us who are in the United States, what kind of society do you live in? Or does it make a difference if you are in the northern United States versus the southern United States? The eastern versus the western? Or the northeastern versus the southwestern? Or the southeastern versus the north northwestern? Does it matter? where you live or does it matter in your household because you can have you can transplant from an eastern culture to a western community and take your culture with you so you move from the middle east you come to the united states but you take your culture with you so as it relates to your house and your household those rules still stand. 
and a woman cannot do certain things and a man must do certain things and if either of them deviate from such you have dishonored the family and are subject to ostracized being ostracized or even put to death but how then do you put someone to death in a culture or in a community that does not accept your cultural beliefs and to even break it down much further as an individual living in a country where you are free to be who you are and to express yourself in whichever way you see fit if you decide that this is how you are going to live and it doesn't really matter what anybody else says or does should you then be outcast does that mean then that you are not fit to hold a particular job although you can do the job but because of how you are seen in society does it mean then that you should not have this job so isn't that the 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 whole premise of discrimination at what point are the lines clearly drawn and not blurred where does that happen so Although it might seem obvious that the cultural ideal of honor is closely related to certain religious traditions, including Islam, the data do not support this assumption. Research in Jordan, for instance, showed that teens who strongly endorsed the practice of honor killings did not come from more religious homes than teens who rejected the practice. The ideology of honor is a cultural ideology, but it does not appear to be closely linked with religious ideology, either in the Middle, Eastern, or Western countries. Oh, sorry, it's the Middle Eastern or Western countries. Now, seeing the importance of honor in this way, Westerners might be able to understand that protecting one's honor, even to the extreme of killing one's sibling, or one's child might have an evolutionary adaptive function perhaps even enhancing fitness in the long run in a society in which reputation is everything what is the long-term cost to fitness and sacrificing one's child if it means protecting one's honor on balance the benefits might well outweigh the costs in evolutionary terms now anecdotally at least reports of honor killings in places such as Pakistan appear to have in, in, increased in the recent years, in the late um, 20 teens, rather than decreased. And this seemed to be partially due to, partially true among uh, rural villages. The rural trend is consistent with dynamics of honor related violence in the u.s in what is known as the small town effect more honor oriented states in the unit in the united states particularly in the south and west exhibit elevated rates of argument related homicides among white men precisely the pattern that an honor based perspective would lead us to predict but this elevation in argument-related homicides is magnified further among those living in more rural communities, places where everyone knows your name and everyone knows your shame. Small communities enhance the social consequences of both good reputations and bad ones. The same dynamic appears to be at work in rural parts of more extreme honor cultures halfway around the world where honor killings are justified in the name of preserving a family's reputation. So, do we call Sunday's events an honor slapping? Because he's, this was the in defense of a man's wife? 
Is that how that works? Is the culture of movie stars and celebrities, is that one community and one culture separate and apart from anywhere else where certain things are off limits and those things that are off limits, when you go ahead and, and, and do them, you deserve to be slapped. Is that how that goes? Then if that is the case, then presidential roasts should, should stop. Right? Comedians need to just go ahead and find a new job. Understanding honor killings through this cultural lens has led some, uh, such as philosopher Kwame Anthony Appiah, to suggest the use of mockery as a way to change the social practice. Appiah has described how a variety of under, sorry, undesirable f behaviors from the slave trade to foot binding disappeared in a relatively short time span once they came to be viewed as a source of, of derision rather than a source of respect. The approach, this approach makes sense in light of the incredible value on our cultures place on respect. I myself have advocated such a view. I see it as social, social psychological judo move using the power of a cultural ideal to change a long-standing cultural practice tied to that very ideal. Here's a potential shortcoming for this approach though. For mockery to be an effective catalyst for social change, it must originate from within the society in question. Now to be sure, originating does not have to mean that people outside the society cannot hold a similar contemptuous view, nor that those outside of the society can't ever suggest that the practice is despicable. However, if people within an honor culture per perceive this disdain as a form of social imperialism, the imposition of such of, of a foreign val value system on their community, they then they might paradoxically hold even tighter to the practice as a way to defend and maintain their cultural identity. Now, in this way, as Pakistani writer Rafia Zakaria has eloquently argued, honor killings could become more common rather than less common, even in the face of increasing legal sanctions, to the extent that these sanctions are uh, construed as the capitalized, uh, sorry, um, where am I? I lost my I lost my place on this thing. Uh, to the extent that these sanctions are construed as the capitulation of faraway government officials to the pressures of American or Western leaders, basically, the West is coming in on an Eastern culture and trying to change the practices of that culture. Looking back at that honor killing of the woman that was started coming out on social media and, and, and having provocative pictures and so her brother killed her because she's dishonoring the family's name. All that was, was social media creeping into a community where it was otherwise closed. Things that were done behind closed doors stayed behind closed doors. Now you have social media coming in that leaves doors wide open and everybody gets to see what everybody else is doing. And so it contradicts or it clashed with the culture as they knew it. And as social media expanded into places around the world where things were done differently, it started to change the dynamics in the communities. So now you had clashes. And as such, the honor killings increased because prior to that, nobody believed that they would hear stories of a society where you are free to do as you wish, but they weren't living it. And now they started, as, as, as it crept in with social media and they started living that free will life, what happened? It wasn't accepted. So the honor 
had to be defended. Again, I ask the question, uh, how exactly does it go with a man as a comedian doing his job saying something about another man's wife and the man the husband even though finding it funny is prompted to act on his wife's behalf because she was offended i am at the place many may not agree with me and that is fine but i just want to know why it is that you don't agree with me so that we can talk about it i said it earlier i'll say it again this is where i stand if my partner is offended by something someone said without it being blatantly disrespectful i am going to have to find out from my partner why it is that she's offended why are you letting this thing bother you let's talk about it let's work through it because if now you have 15 people saying the same thing am i going to go slap all 15 people because you as my partner don't like what they're saying or do we need to address what is going on with you why you don't like what they're saying this is where i am at and i'm not going to wait until it gets to 15 people saying it after the first person says it and you are offended let's talk about why you're offended i don't care about that other i don't care about the person that said it that is not my concern they're not in my household they're not my partner no if they're my partner and they say it and and they're going to say that about my other partner then we need to all have a, a round table discussion and find out what is going on but here you have an outsider that is going to say to my partner whatever and my partner is going to be offended by it and want me to go and defend it i'm not going to be a, a, become a martyr because you don't like something somebody say just because you don't like what they said it doesn't make sense because in the very same way that i can take them out they can take me out the very same way i can slap them they can slap me them and a giant church so how can we address situations of honor because it is not dishonorable for me to take my partner and say let's work through this issue where is the dishonor in that everybody is looking at you know you need to go and defend your partner and that's the honorable thing to do where is the dishonor in telling your partner hey wait hold up chill these are just words this is just a comedian doing what a comedian does why are you being offended nope doesn't anybody see the honor in that oh that's right when you're in an honor society when you're in an honor culture it is required that you step up and do something violent to assert yourself well here's the thing though not because you can be violent means you should be violent and the news at this time gunshots rang out in downtown kingston afternoon as gunmen engaged the police in a we're gonna get into musical therapy right now City. One we're kicking it off with the sound of hezron this track is called Dead Man's Corner. Thank you to Matt Neal Trucking for sponsoring the, the musical therapy segment. Anything 
Cesar. It's Cesar for your stereo. Track called that no right. Come again, you come again now. On the compilation album. Oh, oh, oh. 
of former St. George's College students. Produced by a former St. George's College student. It's called the Greater Glory Rhythm. Right now being played by a former St. George's College student. Kevin Stew, all manners and respect is due Cause you are carry the music and the culture right through Big up yourself, Cesar Sesso Bless Much respect says Come on Cesar, come again 15 minutes to the top of the hour 15 minutes before I get out and out of here Mikey General <laughs> track is called Greater Glory Cycle <laughs> track from the rhythm If you were a people pleaser Things wouldn't get better The sound of Pete Star. <laughs> producer of this album. Executive producer. Then you was a baby boy. This is a true story. In a world full of obstacles. The track is called Daddy. Time for tomorrow. Gave me all the tools that you know to afraid to make you hear it loud Love, my father You're a true example of a king No doubt Love, my father I know you're gone, you'll always be around That's, That's why I love, I love you and love you Baba My journey wasn't easy No But Your lesson saves me And when it got to God tough You never leave me Love 
first time I heard the name Nature Ellis was in dialogue with my brother, the motivator, over there at NIE Radio. He said, Kiss. You hear about this artist named Nature Ellis? I said, listen man, I ain't singing some tune. I like the vibe, I like the vibe. On a fire out of Hawaii. So we need to stand as one and check his car to be better. Life. Maybe this world will be a better future for the generation. Take your time, step up to the situation, you'll be better. Be the better one, be the better one, be the better one. All you gotta do is love, 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 love. Situation, you be better. Be the better one, be the better one, be the better one. All you gotta do is love, 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 love. All you gotta do is love, 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 love.
this is the zone of our third. The track is called Live It Up. As we close out this night shift week, I suggest that you live it up whichever way you can. Because you only get one chance to do it. Do remember, you can catch me working out with DJ Kelly. Downtown Fort Lauderdale this Saturday night. It's the 876 Eats 876 Grand Opening. Courtesy of GMAT Music Solutions. Under the umbrella of Rhythms of the Heart. Nary will be providing live music. DJ is Kelly Fabulous. And yours truly, Kevin Stew. I'm, I'm ready for it. It should be a whole lot of fun. Admission is free. Buy out the bar, buy out the kitchen. Buy your DJs and a singer a drink. That way we can all live it up, yeah? As we part company tonight, I want to thank you each and everyone for tuning in. Thank you for logging on. Thank you for sticking around. Thank you for sharing. Thank you to my affiliates, NIE Radio, the Foundation Radio Network, ClintonLindsay.com. Truly appreciate love you, each and every one of you. PEMG TV, Zeno FM. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Remember the podcast is available. The YouTube of the channel of the same name is available. The Night Shift to DJ Kevin Steele. Well, the YouTube playlist. The channel is DJ Kevin Steele because you can find the Saturday Steele um, playlist on the channel also. As a result of this event coming up on Saturday, there will be no Saturday Steele this weekend. I'll be back next weekend though the Saturday Stew on Reggae Global Radio. And I'll be back on Monday. All being well. Community, fi- community and finance is back in full swing come Monday. Do remember to look out for members of your community and remember your community is not just development that you live in but it spreads far and wide. Those that you pass on the bus, on the plane, the boat, or the train, whether you walk, ride, or drive, these are members of your community. Do something good for one of them today because you never know it's going to do something good for you tomorrow. My name is DJ Kevin Stewart, so I like to do it to you, for you, and with you every Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, 10 p.m. Eastern. Life in the big city is where Until we meet again, be good. If you can't be good, be good at it. Good morning, good afternoon, good day to you, wherever you are in the world, from right here in South Florida. I bid you all a good night. Greetings and salutations, one and all. You're invited to tune in to the night shift with DJ Kevin Stew. It airs on Mondays with Community and Finance, Tuesdays with Healthy Love, and Wednesdays with Real Talk from 10 p.m. to midnight Eastern Time. Come spend some time interacting in the stew pot where we keep things bubbling and wind down in musical therapy. The Night Shift with DJ Kevin Stew is on kevinstew.com where you're encouraged to have acceptance through enlightenment.